Welcome back to the channel, folks. It's me again, Santa Fox here, Devoted Patriots 2 channel, and I have got some good stuff for you today. I got a little bit of reading to do, so I got my goggles out. But uh, more than that, I've got several clips for, for y'all. There's been some really great things going on at the RNC, a lot of inspirational, emotional, uh, uplifting conversations from from uh, World War II veterans, 98-year-old World War II veterans to Trump's granddaughter, people just praising the fact that they're happy Trump's alive. Uh, no doubt about it. It was divine intervention. It wasn't meant to be. I hope Trump uh, is a little more careful in the future, hires a better team. And speaking of hiring a better team, I've got a video clip for you of Marsha Blackburn and another senator, I believe his name is Barrasso. Uh, we're confronting this this uh, chick, chick Lee or whatever her name is, this crazy lady that uh, works for the Secret Service and thinks DEI is more important than actual Trump's rooftop security. Well, they're confronting her at the DNC. Run right up on her, ask her a bunch of questions. Said, this is unacceptable. We'll get into that as well. We'll find out who put her in that position. Jill Biden. Go figure. Getting a little stinky now. Getting a little getting a little sticky back there. Something going on. I don't know exactly what to believe with all these conspiracy theories flying around involving uh, the possible motive of the shooter and was he alone and is the FBI going to give us all the correct information? Will Mayorkas do his job and actually look into the crime here? Uh, will we find out the truth about what happened that day? Not just the logistical details failure of the security, but who was this crazy kid? He, caught, he uh, needed to change the trajectory of this country with a bullet. Now, we're going to get into all of that. We're going to get into Joe Rogan uh, and and Tucker Carlson, speaking a little bit about that as well. Got several clips here for you, like I said, folks, so stick around. First off, we'll get into a little bit of reading. You know how everybody hated George Soros and uh, Mark Zuckerberg's money being in the races? Uh, us Republicans hate that. Kind of don't like a, when a billionaire puts their foot on the uh, on the scale of, uh, of elections. Because, you know, money does help with elections. It helps a lot with advertising, buying drop boxes, uh, paying lawyers to contest things uh, before they were even contestable. You know, it, it does take money to do the nasty. You know what I'm talking about, folks. Well, that's not what Elon Musk is doing. But the left is crying about it. They had no problem with Mark Zuckerberg's $400 million investment on the 2020 election. They have no problem with taking every dime they can get from the Soros Foundation to uh, prop up their uh, DAs all the way up to uh, crooked senators, all the way up into the executive branch. George Soros is deeply involved. Democrats don't seem to have a problem with none of that. No problem. Well, the minute the richest man in the world, talking about Elon Musk, decides he wants to start donating to Trump, on a big scale, talking about super PAC money, $45 million a month, uh, looks like close to a half a billion dollars. Um, big numbers, folks. Glad to see it. Um, glad the left doesn't like it, because you know what? What's good for the goose is what's good for the gander. Now, Elon Musk is not going to help rig the elections with Zuckerbucks. Uh, He's going to spend his own money and allow, and allow his free speech plat platform, X, to be part of the catalyst of making it happen. You watch, folks. X is not only a place to get fact checked in real time uh, to find the truth, but it'll also be the place where a lot of campaigns are decided. I'm talking about Senate races and House races, because when they get up there and lie, 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 people like Elon Musk and the public on X will put you in check right quick with the fact check if you're lying. So these politicians over on Twitter, they better be careful if they're trying to get reelected because lying on Twitter ain't. It uh, doesn't work too much these days, and I'm glad to see it. Now, let's go ahead and get into this. I'm glad we've got this fighter for free speech, richest man in the world, on Team Trump. That's a wonderful thing, folks. And you know what? If the Bidens hate it, that makes it even better. Now, earlier today, Joe Biden tweeted out, I'm sick. And then I guess one of his staffers tweeted out again, of Elon Musk and his rich buddies trying to buy this election. Really? So what happened was, it looked like somebody put, I'm sick, and then sent, and then they had to finish the sentence with another with another uh, tweet. Well, when I seen that I'm sick on Twitter, coming from Joe Biden's account, like me and millions of other people, yeah, you're sick, all right. 
you're really sick. And, and the adjectives and things just went explorative from there. Uh, Joe Biden put his foot in his mouth by putting on Twitter that I'm sick because nobody disagrees with that at this point. Now, he's mad that Elon Musk is supporting Trump instead of him. Maybe they should have invited Elon Musk to the White House when they were trying to do all that electric car push. Maybe they shouldn't have spied on Twitter and tried to prevent Elon Musk from buying it. Maybe they shouldn't be sanctioning Elon Musk, the richest man in the world, when he's the one part of our future space program. These Democrats are morons. They lost some of the best people in the in the country as far as business leaders uh, due to just their bumbling lack of incompetence. And I'm glad to see Elon Musk is another one. Come on over to Team Trump. I think we've got this election, folks. I believe we've got this one in the bag. Let's go ahead and watch this Biden video. Now, this is a little, little tacky. Don't donate to Biden, but this is what the Biden administration is pump, pumping out there today. Bear with me while this thing relocates. It says, we must stop Donald Trump. We're continuing on this, on this team to invest in the necessary resources to stop, stop him. Donate now. Here's your credit card information. So, it looks like the Biden campaign is doing their best to try to make money off people's anger of Elon Musk and Trump's um, friendship and endorsement. Elon Musk says, I fully support uh, Donald J. Trump. He also said, he also said, we never had a tough SOB as this since Theodore Roosevelt. That was a hell of a uh, thing to say. I'm glad he said it because it's absolutely true. How many people can get shot in the face and stand up and want to, and want to let everybody in the crowd know, fight, fight, fight. I'm okay. I'm not going anywhere. They're not taking me out. And you know what? I couldn't figure out why this made everybody so emotional, including myself. Not at first. It wasn't just because I, I love Trump. I love my country, and I felt like they were both slipping away. That was a huge part of it. But also, there's this one thing that we all are resonating with still today. We all witnessed a miracle. There's no denying that at this point. That's where it really gets me. How many millions of people, how many few people in this world, earth ever witnessed a miracle? 500 million people got to watch a miracle happen on live television somewhere, some channel, some station, some clip, rewatched, retweeted, reposted, reshared. This, um, this week will go down in history as, as uh, actually this year will go down in history as the craziest year we've ever been through. And this week, was the uh, crescendo of it all. It was the uh, enough to, it was enough to unite the party. Anybody that doesn't support Trump or the MAGA movement today who calls themselves a Republican needs to get, get out of the job. They need to go find them another job. They need to go work for the other team. Because at this point, if you're not on Team Trump, uh, you're not on Team America. And that's just the truth. Now, let me do a little bit of reading here before we get to this next clip or these clips. It says a fundraising plea comes after the report that Musk would donate $45 million a month to pro-Trump super PAC, having publicly endorsed Trump after his failed assassination attempt against him. Also complaining about Musk's influence on social media is socialist Senator Bernie Sanders, excuse me, who claimed his donation risked killing off American democracy. Elon Musk, the world's richest person, is donating $45 million a month to Trump's campaign, he wrote. In democracy is to survive in the United States. Uh, we need to overturn citizens, overturn citizens united, and move to public funding of elections. We need a government that represents all, not just billionaires. Bernie Sanders never had a problem with the Zuckerbucks or the Soros money, but all of a sudden, somebody that got enough money to make them a game changer in this race with the financing. Oh, now it's a problem for the socialists. Mm -hmm. Rules for thee and not for me. 
Such complaints are deeply ironic, given that the Biden and the Democrats' parties are largely funded by billionaires' donors, including LinkedIn founder Reid Hoffman, business mogul Mike Bloomberg, and, of course, George Soros, and so many others. All right, folks, that's enough reading for you today. Let me get these goggles out of my way. We'll get right into it. Now, Secret Service, let me give you a little backstory on this next clip. Secret Service uh, chief was confronted at at the RNC. Um, I'm talking about the DEI lady that Jill hired. She was confronted at the RNC by Marshall Blackburn and another couple of senators, and they were not trying to let her get away. This is this is this this is how people like her need to be treated. She needs to not only be subpoenaed, but like Mike Johnson said this morning, she needs to be dealt with. All right, here we go, folks. It is a Fox News clip, so bear with me. Drag this down a little bit for y'all. All righty. Peace senators confronting Secret Service Director Kim Cheadle at the RNC. They have been demanding answers after the assassination attempt on Saturday on former President Donald Trump. She won't talk to the people. She won't talk to them. Chad Pergram joins us now with details. Chad, what happened? Brian, good morning. This confrontation at the convention emphasizes how incensed lawmakers are at Cheadle after the epic security breakdown. Republicans John Barrasso and Marsha Blackburn hectored Cheadle when they found her at the GOP convention. Cheadle did not ass. appear on two conference calls about the shooting yesterday. FBI Director Christopher Wray led the calls with House and Senate members. One member said they cut off the call after only four questions. Bastards. Completely unsatisfied. It was a complete cover <laughs> briefing by the Secret Service. The director of the Secret Service needs to lose her job. This was appalling. They shut it after, after just a couple of questions and didn't get to any of the meat of the matter. Now, Cheadle agreed to a... Now, Congress did get four questions in, not one question from a Republican. They didn't, they didn't point that out, but that was the fact. Only the Democrats got to ask questions. Once the questions got a little bit into the weeds of somebody's lying, call was over. They're hiding something, folks. They're hiding their incompetence or their plot to prevent Trump from having... Adequate security. Appear before the House Oversight Committee on Monday. House Oversight Committee Chairman James Comer issued a subpoena to compel Cheadle to testify. Homeland Security Committee Chairman Mark Green wants Cheadle to testify before his panel on Tuesday. Get Secret her. Service needs to get its act together. Whoever made the decision not to cover that building, yeah. you know, that's probably the biggest fl flaw in this thing. And at least Director Cheadle was brave enough to say that uh, in this particular call we just had. Uh, that, that can't happen again. Not ever. She did not say that. What she said was it was the local police's responsibility to cover that building. And the local police have already come out uh from that city, the local police have already come out and said, no, it was not our job. We were there con conducting traffic. Again. Now, Green says local Pennsylvania officials will also testify before his committee Tuesday. House Speaker Mike Johnson and Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell are demanding that Cheadle resign. Brian, back to you. Hey, uh, okay. Chad, isn't Cheadle's boss, Homeland Listen. Security Secretary... Mayorkas? Why don't they call him, yes. too? Well, that's something that Mark Green, he has asked Mayorkas to appear on Tuesday. We know, don't know definitively whether or not uh, Mayorkas will be there. In fact, Green told me last night that he would be happy to have uh, the deputies come in for that hearing, but he definitely wants Cheadle there on Tuesday. She will appear on Monday, and we're going to have hearings probably maybe even during the August recess. I had one senior source not rule that out yesterday. Well, and, and we've heard uh, Mayorkas say a million times the border is secure. Uh, he can't say that site was secure. 
Well, I wouldn't be surprised at this rate, and this was something that was intimated to me yesterday, that they might try to have some sort of contempt of Congress resolution for Cheadle, maybe something even for Mayorkas again. Remember, yeah. there was a I vote related I couldn't to that be, just before the recess. Right. I could not be less interested in that. I just want answers. Thanks so much, Chad. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here. Yeah, I, I really don't know what to think about investigations that go through Congress. Hopefully, they'll collect evidence and be able to throw the book at every one of these people that have wronged Trump, all the way down to the Secret Service director and not doing their friggin' job. We got a lot of accountability to catch up on folks. I hope they're building cases like they're supposed to be. Now, here is Donald Trump Jr. and Eric Trump. They're at the convention. And uh, they get confronted by an MSNBC host. Doesn't turn out too well for him. Here we go. At the convention. If the media actually starts being an honest broker, talking about the things that he did, the prosperity he brought, the peace deals that he signed around the world, rather than the disaster that we're living right now, I think you'd do everyone in the country a big favor. I know immigration is important to him. I covered the family separation crisis closely. Will we continue to see policies like separating 5,000 children deliberately from their parents? You mean the Obama administration? You know they didn't do that, sir. Okay. Sure. Liar. Will there be a second family separation policy? It's MSDNC, so I expect nothing less from you clowns. Even, even to Today. Even 48 hours later, you couldn't wait. You couldn't wait with your lies and with your nonsense. So just get out of here. Damn. That's why you need to treat them. <clears throat> I have no respect for the mainstream media anymore. And when they try to badger somebody or say something shitty to you in a conversation, supposedly a question, no, they're trying to get their talking points out on video. Whether your talk, whether your conversation ever gets into the conversation or not, they've already made you look bad just by the way they throw the questions out there. They're in total defense of the Democrat Party, and it's so blatantly obvious. I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad he called it out. I'm glad more people are starting to wake up and see the media is a huge part of the problem here in America. A huge part of this whole problem of how our government got so far twisted. Now, this is a great little clip here, too. This is uh, Tucker Carlson and Joe Rogan. Bear with me. This thing's spooling for some reason. Must be having a little slow internet today. Must be everybody doing all these lives on all these other channels. Well, I guess it would I'll take someone... All right, here we go, folks. I got it going. Apologize, apologize. Now, check out this statement, and I got another clip for you uh, right after this of Tucker Carlson at the RNC. Had an interview with a lady from Heritage Foundation. Check out what he says. It would take someone, uh, you know, who'd be willing to be assassinated to do anything like that. And so as, as you're choosing your leaders, ask yourself, does this person mean it enough to die? And that's the same question you would ask about your own dad. Does he love me enough to die for me? About your own husband. Does he love me enough to protect me from a home, home invader at risk to himself? Like the the basic prerequisite for leadership is love of the people you lead and the yep. willingness to die for them. And if you don't have that, you shouldn't be leading, period. It's true in the military. It's true in business. It's true in your home. And it's true in the government. And so no president will fix this unless he's like literally willing to die for it. And short of that, it can't be fixed. Yeah, that was a clip I got off Benny Johnson earlier. Um, he's right. And I've said this several times. You know, you have to be willing to die for this country to go into our military. It should be a prerequisite as well to be president. Matter of fact, I think uh, it's probably not a bad idea that all presidents should have some previous military uh, background, maybe a couple of years in service, as a minimum. That wouldn't be a bad idea either. Just my opinion, folks. Got one more great clip for you. Here's Tucker Carlson at the at the RNC, and they're talking a little bit more about um, what shape the deep state's in now that they missed. But my my strong sense is they no, they've given up. They Trump is going to be president. They know that at this point, um, it would just be too messy to stop that stealing the election once again like they did in 2020 is just too hard 
everyone's expecting it. Um, I think it would it would not be worth it, actually. Uh, you know, at some point we may find out what happened on Saturday. A guy with a rifle wound up on a building, you know, that close with a ladder and all these people saw it and the Secret Service, they're like, what is that? You know, it's not crazy to think that there was something there. It was an effort to kill Trump. And it wasn't just a lone gunman who was killed. Uh, that it was something else. But I don't think going forward, look, I think everyone has kind of accepted the fact that Trump's going to win and it would be too hard to stop him from winning. This is just my gut as of today. And Kamala Harris, like, that's not going to work. What they really want to do is subvert Trump with a running mate who agrees with the Democrats and on the, on the, on the big issues, on the economy and foreign policy. And that was the Doug Bargum. And there are a whole bunch of those. And donors tried to force them in in the last 48 hours. They tried really, really hard. You, you can't beat Trump, clearly. You shoot him in the face and he gets more popular. I mean, really? So what we need to do is just rot it from within with, like, some running mate who, uh, you know, let's make Nikki Haley the running mate or something like that. Oh, um, and they failed. So I'm pretty hopeful. You had predicted about a year ago that an assassination attempt on Trump was likely. How did we get here? Um, well, we got here, uh, you know, disaster has many authors. So um, we got here for a bunch of different reasons. I think there's been, I say this as someone who's been in the media my whole life, 33 years, an extraordinary amount of recklessness and dishonesty in the American news media, which is loathsome. Um, the legacy media, the big companies that I spent my life working for, um, have really dedicated themselves to lying uh, in a very cruel and vicious way. You know, people like Joe Scarborough did a lot. He's not talking about just MSDNC and CNN. He's talking about Fox News. I think um, to make assassination attempts like that possible. Um, they're comfortable with violence. Scarborough especially is comfortable with violence, but a lot of them are, I think. And uh, so they, they should be ashamed they're not, but they should be. But I think more broadly, you know, there's a lot going on um, that is unseen. There's a lot of evil all of a sudden in this country. I never noticed it before. I'm not saying it wasn't here, but I, in the 55 years I've been here, I never, I haven't seen it like I've seen it in the last year. You know, people really being vicious, people espousing cruelty and killing, people telling you that abortion for its own sake or war for its own sake is a good thing. Like, what is that? You know, that's evil. So there's a lot of that. And this is, I would say, a manifestation of it. Tucker, the past 24 hours has been wild. The amount of news that has come out. How did the attempted assassination on former President Donald Trump change this election? Well, Trump won when that happened um, because he displayed physical courage. And, you know, if you live in a society where people are literally dating by remote virtually and working virtually, you can kind of lose touch with the physical reality of life. But the unchanging truth is that leadership requires courage and not just abstract courage, moral courage, uh, but physical courage. You know, someone starts shooting a rifle. Like, are you going to wet yourself and start crying and run away? Or are you going to stand up and look at your people and raise your fist and say fight? And very few people are capable of doing that. And he is. And um, yep. therefore he wins. Because that supersedes all this nonsense that we talk about ourselves into believing is important. No, the guy got shot in the face. He stood up with blood streaming down the side of his head, blood on his hands and said, fight, totally defiant. That's an act of undeniable courage that was not staged. You couldn't stage that. Um, and that man is the leader and he wins. And by the way, notice what happens to everyone in the crowd. When a leader is strong, his people are calm. His courage gives them heart. That's true for a father. That was one of the things that really, really made me uh, uh, take a, a double take on what happened with the shooting. 99% of the time, if there's a crowd of people in the streets at a concert, any kind of venue, and there is gunshots, because we've had so many mass shootings, people start scattering and hitting the floor and screaming and trampling each other. That's the normal protocol for shooting, mass hysteria. I didn't see that. I saw people concerned for Trump. 
I didn't see a bunch of scared people at that uh, rally. Only people that I seen that looked scared was a couple of them, uh, Secret Service agents. Other than that, I think the American people are solid behind Trump. Like he's solid behind us. That's why he'll win. That's why we got to go vote. Register to vote and vote or get off my channel. <laughs> Just kidding. But I do encourage everybody to vote, vote, vote. Encourage your family to vote. Get your kids to vote if they're old enough. Get your grandparents to vote. Get your neighbors to vote. We got to win. Hands down, landslide. This is not time to get complacent because it looks like the odds are in our favor. Trump needs to uh, be prayed for by everybody that uh, wants, wants our country to succeed. Because right here, right now, this place in time, he's the right man for